Good to see you guys. Hopefully you guys are, are doing well today. Happy Halloween. Uh, we know we know we're super excited about Halloween. We get like super excited about Halloween in this family. So um, you know, it's always fun. So we are we're live, but yeah. we did something a little different today. We started with our radio show, um, and then we're actually in the first commercial right now because we wanted to intro really well. Uh, so for today's wellness radio. We actually, we're going to talk about Dr. Nathan's uh, men's coaching program, which has not officially launched yet. Yeah. It will officially launch next week. But we had a caller call in about gut issues. I think it was for his daughter. Mm -hmm. sure. And just talking about how they've done all these tests, how they've done all these things. Um, and she's not better. She's not well. And so he was asking if we could They've done like colonoscopy. They've done... Uh, you know, seen a GI specialist, you know, tried to try to look at all of those things and, and what they ended up finding out is that none of the things they were doing were, were really finding out root cause. Now, what, what do I mean by that? Like, you know, so if you go into a GI specialist, which again, there's a time and a place, so I'm not, yes, not yeah. saying that at all, but the majority of the time they're going to look and see, uh, is there any ulcers? Is there any bleeding? Is there any cancer? Um, and so let me give you an example. They find an ulcer right whereas we find out what caused the ulcer That's right good, yeah they find the cancer where we want to say what created the cancer right they find the bleeding we want to say hey what overgrowth or what bacteria what what disruption to the digestive system is creating the bleeding in the stool so that's kind of the difference of, of what we're talking about today on the show so you know again we have to recognize, we have to look at it with, with realistic, uh, you know, glasses here and recognize that, you know, colon cancer is the number one uh, fastest rising cancer on the planet uh, in, in people 30 to 35 uh, or below. So we really want to make sure uh, that, that we are paying attention to this. All right, guys, we're going live, so we're trying to figure it out. All right, guys, welcome back to Wellness Radio. I am your health expert, Dr. Nathan Warren. I'm here with my beautiful wife, Dr. Rebecca Warren. We're talking about uh, gut health. We had Tom call in uh, just a little bit ago with uh, a question about uh, looking at, you know, the way that um, I believe it was a family member that had some issues with their digestive system uh, and kind of what was our approach and what do we do that's that's different and how would we find out, you know, the root cause of, of, of gut issues. And so what we talked about is, number one, we always like to be really specific, um, you know, when addressing the gut. Yes, we know that there are certain things that, that everybody can benefit from and we can go over some of those, you know, maybe later on in the show. But we we really like to be specific right? because what I found, let me give you an example. I have a patient. He is 17 years old uh, from Murfreesboro, Tennessee, uh, coaching his parents and, and coaching him. And this is a kid that went to uh, the Mayo Clinic. He's been to Vanderbilt. Uh, he's been kind of all over. They've diagnosed him with everything from lupus to fibromyalgia to, um, I believe, another diagnosis of possibly Lyme disease. And so they kind of just threw all of these different labels and diagnoses at him. And so I believe it was her sister that lives in Chattanooga that listens to our radio show, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and told him to told him to, to check us out. And so I started coaching him. And so first thing I did with him because of there's symptoms everywhere. So most of the time, if I see symptoms all over the place, I'm going to go right back to the foundations and I'm going to say, Hey, what is going on in the gut? Because I know the immune system is there. I know that systemically that's going to be a major part, but also he'd been diagnosed with two different autoimmune conditions. So I'm going to go to the gut. So we looked at a stool test. Uh, we do a what's called a PCR test. So that's going to be very, very specific. No, it's not like the COVID test. It's not specific and probably one of the most abysmal tests ever, <laughs> ever designed uh, on the planet. We actually do one that's that's a specific test for the stool. And, and we're able to see a full environmental kind of workup on what's going on with the gut. So what I was able to see in his case is I saw a high amount of C. diff. 
C. diff is what we call a frank pathogen. It is something that, that has to be addressed immediately, right? An acute C. diff, that's like what people can die from in third world countries. His was more of a chronic issue with C. diff. And so again, it was wrecking havoc on his gut and his immune system. He also had a overgrowth of Giardia, which again, you're looking at that as a parasite. And it was actually quite, quite a bit overgrown. He had overgrowth of good bacteria, he also had a decrease uh, in some bacteria that, that he needed. So uh, I, I believe I always pronounce it wrong. Is it firmicutes that he had firmicutes, a decrease in it? So, firmicutes, and firmicutes. There you go. So he had an words. overgrowth of the, the back, bacteridia. Say it again. Bacteridides. There you go. And an undergrowth uh, of firmicutes. So, I never get to, wow, I never really get good. to be the person I who never, pronounces words right. Even in, a, even in a clinical setting, I never say those two words. Because <laughs> I'm like, I don't, I do not want to butcher this at all. So I don't even say those. Fun words, um, yeah. And so we were able to see this, but he also had something that was called secretory IgA. He had a low secretory IgA, which let us know that his immune system was way, way down. So I was able to see kind of this full spectrum spectrum. Oh, and by the way, gluten and gliadin destroyed his gut because I was actually able to see those markers on the stool test. So he started doing some work. It took about, uh, you know, six and a half months. I think I've been coaching him now and he has now gained weight back and muscle. He's sleeping regularly. He feels fantastic to the point where he was able to go back to school, not only back to school, but he just started college this past, you know, this past semester and is doing fantastic in it. He is, he's changed his entire life. His family's changed the way that they've eaten. And again, all of this by being specific with the gut. And what I love the most, can I just say, I, I just have to say this. What I love the most is that he went to the super prestigious Vanderbilt Hospital, which for some reason in the state of Tennessee, people think that they are just like gods for some reason, which I'll have to say, I, I, I love that Vanderbilt's there. You know why? Because I get to get all of their patients that they can't even touch and get well, and I get to get them and get them well. I love it, and I love to be able to pick on Vanderbilt University because <laughs> I don't know I don't know if it was like your founder that just gave you a massive amount of money, and that's what made your name good because it can't be the hospital that made the yeah. name good. Maybe but, they're good for emergencies. Maybe they're good. I don't know what they're good at. But right. anyway, I love it because now he's gotten his life back, and he's actually able to see – his entire, you know, kind of his future change. And he's able to go to college. He's able to see those things happen all because we're able to look at the gut and look at the environment and see those things. And so happen. the one thing I hear a lot of is I have Crohn's and I have, you know, gone gluten free. I've done naturally. Okay. This is like my biggest pet peeve. Cause it's like, there's people, you guys may have tried this. You guys may have some gut issues and you drink the kombucha, you got the probiotic from Whole Foods, you went gluten-free and dairy-free, and you just can't, it just didn't work. It yeah. just didn't work. Like, you went the natural approach. And I'm going to give it real with you. Like, we see people in all spectrums in our office, people that just want to be optimal and they want to be preventative, and then we see people with serious health issues like, you know, your patient that you were coaching. Uh, listen, if you have gut issues, you can't just drink kombucha. You just yeah. can't. You can't just drink kombucha. For a lot of you guys, it would actually make the problem worse. Especially um, to be honest, overgrowth. if you, if you have, have small in intestinal bowel overgrowth, you can't just give up gluten. Like, if you have a gut issue that has been there long enough that it's disrupting your way of life, I'm just going to have to be honest with you. You just can't eat your way to health. You have to take an intensive approach to helping that gut. And it's not just going to be a probiotic. There's so many different strands of probiotic. I mean, our, our bacteria in our gut, we have more bacteria in our body. We have more viruses in our body than we have cells. Yeah. Like, we are more populated with those things. And for you to think, like, for, and, and it's, it's, you can Google it. You can see everyone's like, oh, yeah, just eat more just fermented foods. But if you have a gut issue where it's Crohn's, where it's affecting your ability to go to the bathroom, where I have... I've had women come into my office and they'll go once every three days. That is not, yeah, not normal. You're not, you're not going to the bathroom. That means you're not getting rid of toxins. That means you're not getting rid of estrogen. That means you're not absorbing food. That means you're having food there sit in your body and go rancid. Okay. So 
you gone are the days that you can just our maybe our great grandparents could just eat their way to health. Yeah. We're surrounded by so many different toxins and just bombarded that you you have to go deeper than just yeah. getting rid of gluten and dairy and just taking fiber. Like you have to go down into the gut. And then I'll say this. Because the gut microbiome is so diverse, we do one of the best tests on the market. It looks at DNA. It just looks at what's left in the stool. Like it's fantastic. It's still not even 100% accurate. Yeah. So we have instances where people get tested. We address what's on the test, but there's some still some other stuff that's lingering. Yeah. And guess what we have to do? We have to stop trying to go after something and we'll focus all of our intention on rebuilding the gut. What does that mean? Looking at, there's leaky gut, you guys have probably heard of, gut permeability, but then there's a mucosal lining, there's a, the mucus lining, then there's your immune system that needs to be addressed, then there's different types of bacteria, there's like Saccharomyces boulardii that you can work in, there's lactobacillus, there's spore-forming probiotics, there's HU58. There's bifido. There's, there's bifido. There's so many different types of bacteria that you can utilize for different issues. Then we also have prebiotics specific for certain brands. Um, we also have specific fiber that's not going to make the gut microbiome. Then you have to get rid of biofilm that bad things can hide under. Then you have to bind. I mean, there's so much going on there that you can literally get down to the cause and actually get better but you have to start taking the right steps yep. going in and chasing these symptoms is never going to get you well you have to get deep enough yep. to know what's going on we can absolutely help you guys with that you can find out more information about us on doctorswarren.com on our website you can request a consult right there um, to see if you're a good fit in our office if we can help you and join our newsletter where we're sending yep. out free information every radio show we talk about a million different things we get messages where people want us to send them information you can get it in the email and you can find us on facebook at doctors warren we gotta go on a quick break mm -hmm. this is the wellness radio and we'll see you right after the break all right guys so looking at you know the the what you were talking about there and with I'm, so many different levels so i want to say something yeah, last time we got on the radio show if you guys saw that, it was weird. Uh, so I asked him to play Halloween music, oh. <laughs> which means we can't hear it. So oh, that's why we didn't it. know we were going back live. Gotcha, so he gotcha. plays Halloween music and we're supposed to be quiet. Hopefully you've never uh, experienced yeah. back or neck All right, problems, so but if you have. Looking in the, looking in the, um, that's crazy, I didn't realize that. That's why, that's why there was. You're like, he, he kept saying, if we're talking and the people on the radio can hear us while they're playing Halloween music. I was like freaking all, out. I was like, all for me to have Halloween music, guys. I like a good theme, okay? Right, yeah, I like yeah. a good theme yeah. for everything. No doubt. I gotta have Halloween music. On the Halloween radio show. No doubt. So you were talking about all the different layers that it takes to get the gut well. And so, yeah, you know, every now and then you have somebody that, that, that does, like, start a probiotic and, boom, like, things get, get really well. And they're, like, you know, they go on with life and they feel fantastic and they see things happen. Like, every now and then you can accidentally hit a home run, right? But then other times, in the majority of the time, there's usually layers to the, that situation. And yeah, probiotics are absolutely necessary and they can be fantastic, but for a certain amount of people, they can actually also be, um, you know, kind of upsetting as well. There's a big, big part of the population that is dealing with something now called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And the primary reason reason for this issue is because of things like antibiotics and overuse of antibiotics. And, and the other part of it is things like food poisoning. Those are two of the biggest <laughs> causes that's of... That's frustrating Yeah, too, it is. Because you think like you get food poisoning and that's the end of it, but it can have some lasting effect. Yeah. Anything will affect the balance of well, the gut microbiome. I'm pretty sure that's where some of my gut issues came from. Remember? Woo! So it was uh, Christmas Woo! at your sister's. That was bad. Yeah, and it was, what was that, four years ago? And I think not yeah. to scare anyone. Yeah. 
But wasn't it from like a greens powder packet? Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, I maybe they had a, like wasn't that like the salmonella or like maybe whatever the spinach outbreak. was you know not good in it or something. Yeah, I don't know. But it, man, it I got it was horrible. It was absolutely horrible. I had food poisoning uh, on Christmas night, and anyway, it really did. It changed up my gut microbiome, and I had to do some work to get it back balanced again to see that improve over time. Um, but again, there's layers to it. There's layers to it. So we talked about antibiotics can be a major cause of overgrowth and gut issues. I talked earlier on on the radio about glyphosate being a major, major cause. So if you're still consuming non-organic food or non-local food, you are getting a high source of things like herbicides and pesticides, and that residue will damage your gut. That's not an opinion. That's an absolute fact. Now, some of the other things that you'll see that can damage the gut as well and some of you haven't even changed your water uh, that's going on as well too which contains a lot of those contaminants as well so we're going to go live again so hang on one second uh, and we'll get going All right, guys, welcome back to Wellness Radio. Uh, we're playing some of that Halloween music on Halloween. Uh, so it's, that it's fantastic. That makes me so happy. Like, ooh, I heard the spooky music. Yeah, we do like Halloween here. It's pretty fun. We get, kids yeah, get it's dressed weird. up. And... We're both the biggest scaredy cats. Oh, yeah. We're both like, it's dark outside. Like, which one of us is going to go to the car to grab something? But our son <laughs> he loves came it. out of the womb, like, loving all things scary. And oh, I'm yeah. like, weird like why he's like let's watch a Halloween. like we have been listening to halloween pandora yeah. since the summer so <laughs> he actually wants a, weird. He wants a halloween birthday party we are February, going to do so a halloween birthday yeah. party so yeah we're like you watch a scary movie with dr becker and myself and lights are on for the no, next like we're not nights. we don't watch yeah, scary movies do like yeah. that i mean hocus pocus was a little like Oh, yeah. oh, like, I don't know about this movie. Stranger Things was pushing it for Oh, us. Stranger Things was, yeah. Listen, we're good at what we do. And uh, the things not we're not scary. great at, we're completely transparent about. That's and scary true. movies and scary anything yeah. is not, take them, Dread Hollows, our engineer, yeah. he said, take them to Dread Hollows. The oh, funny man. thing is. He probably would like it. We, he used to be in forest school and we would drive past Dread Hollow, the sign. Yeah. And he's obsessed with Dread Hollow. Is that Dread Hollow? And I don't even know what it is. I think when but... he thought it closed down because of, you know, COVID, he was really upset. He was really upset, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... It's not closed down, though, guys. Dread Hollow is not. Yeah. But he, like, the other day, we were here at Raccoon Mountain, and he was like, is that Dread Hollow? Like, the mountain. <laughs> and I'm like, no, it's, I think it's Raccoon Mountain. Like, it's not Dread Hollow. Oh, I so. love, you love Halloween. Halloween fun for you guys. Yeah. I hope you guys, I honestly hope that you guys that are listening to this can have a great normal day to day. Yes. Not sure. new normal. Yeah. No. Normal. Normal. Where you go out and have fun because we are. Like we're yeah. not well actually we've been doing that for a while now. You know, with everything that's going on, yeah. um, I think it's so important not just for ourselves but for our children to make sure that we are not adhering to a new normal, that we're nope. adhering to the normal that children need. Yep. And trick or treating and having fun and not being Scared because another person's breathing next to them Dude, that's come on you know that's <laughs> normal that's what yeah. should be normal okay so yeah. i just hope that all of you guys have a great halloween today because yeah. we are having a great halloween today yep. and we're gonna have a lot of fun and you know what like screw covid just <laughs> It's fun to see kids be kids, though, right? I mean, yeah. I, and that's, and more so than ever, man. I'm just so, I'm so, when I see kids like playing on a playground, when I see them, you know, playing yeah. out in nature, whatever it is, like, I, I am, I am so much more appreciative now because of what I saw in, you know, April and in, in, in yeah. May and June. And man, that just like, it broke my heart, right? Not to see like, kids playing. It broke my heart. Interacting. When, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and so I just, just, yeah, enjoy, enjoy. Enjoy the kids today. Have a have mm -hmm. a blast. It's going to be a lot of fun. And which is why we are willing to do semi scary things for our son. That's okay, right. even though we hate it. <laughs> so that's right. There we are. There and so are. yeah, all the, I was just thinking about it. another thing that can damage your gut is probably some of the candy that you <gasps> may eat today. <laughs> Artificial coloring, yeah. the sugar. Yeah, that's right. I will yeah. say, like the sugar thing. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about this balance of, you know, how do you live your life? without feeling severely restricted and how can you 
live your life where you can also create good habits in your children. And so this is, you know, I did this on my personal Instagram health page, but I want to share this with you guys because my kids are not going to miss out on fun today at all. You know, they're not going to miss out on fun. So what we do, well, number one, the switch, which comes and she <laughs> takes the candy and we donate that candy and then she bring well she donates the candy can you hear me oh, yeah, no, no. the switch witch does it <laughs> and she brings them a toy but we also get to enjoy candy right now we have so many amazing resources 15 years ago when i started my yeah. health journey you weren't going to be able to find candy that you could enjoy that didn't have sugar in it and so what we want our kids to understand and what you have to understand in your health journey is that food is not good or bad hmm. okay food is amoral at its core a donut is not bad right. okay like and another thing i hate is that people say cheat my cheat meal my cheat day food is not a cheat yeah. like cheating is bad it is one of the yeah. horrible things it can get you kicked out of school it can ruin your marriage food is not a cheat okay you either are choosing to nourish your body and feel your body appropriately, or you're just not going to nourish it that great. And you're talking about real food, real right? food, like, yeah. Like, like fake food is just not food at all, right? Like some of the, well, you know, the the, yeah. the, the the things that you know, I like to say, like the the industrial seed oils, you know, the the vegetable oils, all like that's not food. Like that's it's not, not it's food, not food. That is but chemical. It's also, not this bad thing because if you associate with something being bad then there's like this tug and pull of like i can't have that bad thing i can't have that bad thing and you cut yourself away from that and then what eventually happens what happens every time i try to coach someone through giving up diet coke or coca-cola and they're like oh no i don't need it anymore it's bad i don't i don't need any of that you end up when you're stressed out, when you're overwhelmed, yeah. you end up running to that bad thing. It's like this guilty pleasure. But you have to look at food as, I have an opportunity to feel myself. Yeah. Am I gonna feel myself with a good clean oil? Or am I gonna feel myself with a bad oil? Like I, I gave this example to a woman and neither one of us knew anything about cars, but she understood it. You have a Ferrari, yeah. right? You wanna put some nice stuff in it, right? Yeah. But you do have the opportunity to put some crummy stuff in it. Yeah. But don't be surprised when that Ferrari does not function as great as it should. So food is not good or bad. Yeah. It is something that you get to choose in regards to fuel. So my kids, they have that choice. Do they want to feel themselves well or do they want to feel themselves with sluggish stuff? Stuff that's not nourishing, but it's a choice. And if you make the choice mm -hmm. to fill yourself with, you know, stuff that's not nourishing today, just know you're going to have consequences from that, all right? Well, and also, too, like, you know, the ages that our kids are, four, four and a half and three, you know, that means that, that means since they're not going to the grocery store and picking stuff out, that means that we are the ones that are picking it out. And so, guess what? We do not fill our pantry or our fridge with anything that I wouldn't want my kid to consume. So that means, no, I don't have those hidden, you know, treats that, that I know, you know, may not kill me right now, but, you know, may not but be the, the greatest thing for yeah. me. Like, no, I, I don't have any food that we have in our pantry and our refrigerator. Our kids could literally go into the refrigerator or the pantry. They could eat it and they're going to be not only healthy fine. but that's fine like there's nothing there's nothing wrong with that so right now the ages that they are it means that we're making we're making the the you know choices of what we buy so if you are a parent in that situation and you say well my my kids just won't stop eating cereal and i would then say stop just buying stop buying cereal. this cereal or find a that's brand right you know even though something like magic spoon out there there's a there's a cereal brand that most people don't even know it's called magic spoon that literally tastes like all of your bad cereals that you've ever had in your childhood that's actually made with really great ingredients so you know it's it's like the candy that that we bought you know today for our kids you know you've got things like lilies that is an amazing dark brand chocolate, dark yeah. chocolate they even make the Smart Reese cups sweets. that i snuck into our basket the other day that are made I with organic that. peanut butter sweetened with stevia and so it's not going to spike our blood you know blood glucose um, what'd you say the, the, the Lolly gummy, pop, smart Zolly pops, Zolly. So there's a lot of stuff out there. So I do want to say this, 
we have our pizzas we have our chicken wings we have our candy we have we enjoy our food we enjoy it we have our sodas we have our drinks mm -hmm. and i think that's one of the reasons but, people love coaching with us is because they can transition it's not just this cold tur turkey thing but when i say we have our sweets i'm not just talking about like yeah it, it's some sugar in it. no i'm still having like i'm gonna bake some pumpkin muffins cupcake things from simple mills it's yep. made with coconut sugar it's fantastic with almond flour like you it's know paleo it's, it's paleo and all this uh -huh. and it tastes amazing and then i'm going to say this we set the foundation as children like you said for our children like right now they can't shop for themselves but at some point they get to make the decision yeah. and just like in everything in parenting you can teach them the right way but they're going to be old enough where they're going to make that decision. And I'm, you know, one day Elijah might want to eat McDonald's mm -hmm. and whatever. Like, the thing is this. We set the foundation. If they know and they learn and they understand what food is, yep. then they can make the right decisions. And if they don't make the right decisions, then it's a learning process yeah. for them. Uh, and this also goes for people. Listen, I have this conversation with 60-year-olds, guys, in my office. I have yep. this because what you don't realize is that you have things from childhood. Mm -hmm. You have a relationship with food that you are bringing along with you. And at the underlying, the undercurrent for why you make the decision that you do, why you choose the Chick-fil-A over just eating at home, why you eat the Snickers versus doing something else, those choices aren't just done nilly-willy. Those choices are because underlying uh, conversation and relationship that you have with food. No doubt. Like, I mean, you, we, we, we have emotions behind the food that we consume. And, and actually I, I would say this, that's a great thing. Like, I, I believe that, that God designed it that way, you know, that when you consume food, like the environment that you're in, the people that you're with, like you get an attachment to that because it creates like a, a very, you know, just amazing community and fellowship and, and relationship around food. And it was designed that way, right? Like, so, mm -hmm. you know, that some of my favorite things on the planet, uh, you know, the, the, it, there's some of my favorite moments on the planet were around food food, you know, with family and with friends. And so I think that that can be a really positive situation. So again, going from, you know, this bad relationship with food that, that you've kind of built up, you know, eating out when you're, when you're feeling, you know, down or sad or, you know, depressed or things like that. Um, and, and switching that around and creating great relationships and friendships and fellowship around good, healthy, you know, food, real food and that can start changing up the way that you feel changing up the way that that, that you uh that you are overall so um i do think that that's really important do we have to take another break yeah so we okay. have to take a break uh someone commented on our facebook live i love your program uh, thank, thank you, you guys so thank much you. listen if you want to know more about us go to doctorswarren.com actually you can submit questions there gary i saw your question um my clinic director just sent it to me we will answer it when we come back from the break you can request a consult on there you can join our newsletter to get this information broken down if you want to re-listen to it if you want to learn more if you want to listen to the whole show we'll send free information to your email and find us on facebook we are live at doctors room when we come back we'll answer your autoimmune question gary and um just kind of wrap up the show this is the wellness radio we'll see you right after the break all right guys oh we're in i think we're in okay <laughs> well we have to give it a chance to play our halloween music um so see we weren't Fine. Oh, sorry. I don't know. It's really hard to tell on. <laughs> Our radio show song. listeners are like, why are they talking right now? Who are they talking to? I always think that. Um, anyway, so, okay, guys, so when it comes to like, just food and just relationship with food, like, I definitely believe food can be a really great thing. It's a powerful tool um, in regards to what you can do. Now, this is the other thing I'm going to say, because there's a lot of people that say that food is medicine. I don't believe that food is medicine. I believe that food is basic. Food is, and, and the reason why I say this is because I've seen this kind of trend where people will, oh, let me lower this so you guys can hear me a little bit better. Here we go. Um, I see this trend, and I felt 
this was overwhelming for me when I was starting my health journey and it could be for you where you watch a video and like if you want to have a healthy immune system eat pomegranate eat a tangerine eat broccoli if you want to help your brain be smarter eat salmon eat this thing eat this. and so there's all these lists of food for different things listen food isn't medicine okay it's not meant to heal us this is what food is food is your fuel it's foundational it's foundational it's something you cannot live without and so you should have a diversity in the foods that you eat when you no longer have that diversity you create an imbalance where disease exists so that when you reintroduce that diversity and that nourishing balance your body goes back to where it needs to be so it's not that the foods that you're eating are healing you your body heals itself what you're doing with the food is you're going back to the basics so that your body can actually be fueled well and i i like to put it this way i i used to tell i i used to describe it this way if you take an apple and you just set it on the ground nothing's gonna happen except that eventually that apple Ooh, is gonna good. is gonna decay and it's gonna it's gonna you know wither away and you know degenerate go away but if you take that apple and you take a bite of it and you eat that apple it's the intelligence inside of your body and your cells that is going to take that apple break it down assimilate it and utilize those nutrients to fuel the life force that's already inside of you and so there's nothing special about the apple what's special is how intelligent and amazing your body is so that's why i don't like the the term you know i'm going to eat my way to health well no 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 eating well and eating healthy is a foundation of just normal function to the body it, it is the it is the fuel and the information to supply that so it's not it's not the the foundational you know or it is a foundational thing right, we're about to go wax in one second All right, guys, welcome back to Wellness Radio. I am your health expert, Dr. Nathan Warren. I'm here with my beautiful wife, Dr. Rebecca Warren. And I believe we had a question. Um, Submitted on our... onto our website. Very you can cool. submit questions on wow. our website nice. too, drswarren.com. That is why I did not build our website because I didn't even know you could do that. That's awesome. <laughs> That's fantastic. All right, so the question was, have we ever treated an autoimmune condition called uh, pemphigus vulgaris? Um, and so let me first off start by saying this, we don't treat anything in our office. All right. I don't treat because number one, I'm not a medical doctor and I'm very, you know, thrilled and thankful that I am not because I don't have to treat anything. Right. And actually I would even, I would even go out and say that treating doesn't really even exist to be honest with you. It's, we work with, again, getting down to the root cause, allowing the body to naturally heal itself by figuring out what is the imbalance in the body. So have I worked with anybody who's had this problem? Yes, I have. Now, what, when you're looking at something like this condition, this autoimmune disease, it's something that affects the skin and it's something that affects mucous membranes, which actually can be very, very painful. It can be, you know, again, when you talk about just, um, you know, especially the mucous membranes, you talk about annoying, that can be super annoying because it's, it's almost on a daily basis. Um, and for some people that have this, it's to the point where their skin and their mucous membranes is so sensitive um, that, that it really creates a lot of damage. So yes, we've worked with patients with this, but going back to what we talked about on the show, even though it's dealing with the skin and the mucous membranes, guess what you have to address with this condition because it's autoimmune. You have to address the gut. You absolutely have. If you do not address the gut, you will not get this person better. So by starting to address the gut, you will start to see symptoms start to reduce and improve. You will. If you do you follow along with actually, you know, uh, the, some gut protocols mm -hmm. based on what's going on? So again, I do a specific stool test so that we can start to, to analyze that and we can start to address that. You also do, uh -huh. you also, I love this too, because I've come to you to help me with some of my clients on this. You also know how to retrain the immune system. Yes. There's ways to reset your immune system. Like you have these memory cells that you have to retrain so that they can stop this kind of antibody. Basically, you have to get rid of 
those, some of those, those, those what are called mature immune cells and replace those with what are called naive immune cells, right? So you have to retrain the Th1, Th2 part of the immune system. And really, most people with autoimmune are stuck in the Th2 part of the immune system. They're stuck in the memory part of the immune system rather than getting a proper cell mediated response from the immune system. So yeah, you have to reach, that's why you can address the gut all you want in, a, in an autoimmune condition, but it's going to continue to rear its ugly head if you don't retrain the immune yeah. system. And so, um, you know, Gary, hopefully that answers your question. Yes, we've worked with people uh, with this autoimmune, this specific autoimmune condition by getting down to the root cause and, and root cause can be different for each individual. Yeah. So. And it takes time too, yep. right? Like it takes time. Some people want to come in and want to see a completely different change in six months when this has been here for 20 years. So That's exactly if right. you guys would like our help, check us out at drswarren.com. You can China, sign up for our free health newsletter where we send all this information to you, send out discounts for products and stuff like that. You can request a consult or you can call our office right now and set up a consult with Heidi. That number is 423-362-5360. Again, that's 423-362-5360. And make sure to find us on Facebook. Yeah. Like and follow Doctors Warren. This is the Wellness Radio, and yeah, we'll see you guys. Up? Yeah, have a happy Halloween, and have we'll see you guys Halloween, next week. Guys.